the next poet that we like to bring up uh, here for here right now for you tonight. Let's put our hands together for Fong Tran. Good. How's everyone today? Good. Uh, so uh, my name is Fong. Um, I uh, organize locally here. Um, I get down with this nonprofit agency called Agent Resources. Uh, I work with youth, uh, so I have the privilege of working with young people, helping them find jobs, internships, uh, know about college and accessing higher education. I manage a youth group uh, called Youth Rise, and so uh, it's a privilege being back in Sacramento. I, I grew up here, and so I just want to give the opportunity to say thank you to Mary and for the folks that put this event together. If it's okay, if we give a round of applause to Mary and the, and the folks. You know, I've been doing poetry for like a year now, uh, and I was just wondering what I should contribute to this space in terms of the topic and dialogue. And uh, I wanted to talk about this poem I have uh, about Betty Brown. She's a representative out of Texas uh, who basically told this Asian American organizer um, at the time to, to literally like go into your communities and change everyone's names to be more white uh, or American. And I felt really offended by that. And so this is my reaction to that piece, and uh, the poem's called the uh, WTF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Historical land colonists, under white supremacists, cover Texas Republican Betty Brown states, would it behoove you and your citizens to attain a name we could deal with more readily here? That's my best uh, interpretation of a white woman. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and the history of old Preston and South Preston continues as thing that Vietnamese and all traditions shared by smooth s indigenous lips and sharp t tongues was colonized by French imperialist letters and accent marks, and it would never be the same. The same colonists constrained my name from its original form and life. My name was Fong, P-H-O-N-G. It meant wind, so I was the Fong in sway. I was wind water breeze through lush open fields during the winds of May. A Fong was ripped out of my chest. Scratched off of my back, written in, substituted as Fong, F-O-N-G. Like a product of a disenfranchising hegemony. Like a broken record fading in and out of the national anthem. My mother, my mother gave birth to my name on this destined to be manifested 13 colony soil. She bent letters on bent knees to serve white majority culture and to cater ignorant American tongues. Ignorant American tongues that couldn't comprehend the beauty behind Fong, the beauty behind my. Erica, when? It wouldn't understand how vowel sounds could rise up in crescendos and topple over like shooting stars. It wouldn't understand how, vow how Yao Nang's accent marks were so heavy that it brought us down to earth and showed us how deep we could really be. You see, Betty Brown was just another conqueror. Conquerors who dictated Vietnamese people for far too long, from the Japanese to the Chinese, from the French and now the Americans. When Vietnamese people came here on refugee boats from Southeast Asian war, we were not wanting economic immigrants out of financial opportunity, but we were needing political refugees out of pure, instinctive survival. We did not come here for Betty Brown to change our names, our cultures, and our identities. So please, Betty Brown, I maintain what's mine, and you can have what's yours. And since Fong is a construction made under you, what the Fong does your name mean? All right, cool. And so, um, you know, I think uh, in terms of the dialogue was what's happening. You know, what I wanted to try to say was Betty Brown, you know, like I don't think, you know, it takes uh, just a person, a nation to go to another country and colonize. I think we can get colonized here. I think with just the mindset of like what Betty Brown was, she was trying to honestly wipe a culture, you know, like take identity away from people. And I think it's that type of mindset where you don't allow people to be their own type of people and their culture that we you know, colonize and occupy people. And so that's what I want to try to say with that one. Um, but it's, it's so beautiful seeing uh, folks in this room. Um, I think you know, folks of color, we really need to come together. Uh, and I appreciate that they asked the Asian brother to be here and you know, add to the dialogue because I think you know, people of color, we actually have a lot more commonalities and there are differences. And I think, you know, people, this institutions actually divide us um, when we should be uniting 
um, because of our struggles and whatnot. And so uh, this next poem uh, <laughs> is, a, is a piece when I, I actually graduated from UC Berkeley. And at the time, I was organizing. And um, uh, an issue had come up, a very strong issue <clears throat> that I was very passionate about, which was um, Panda Express was trying to come up on campus. And, um, you know, and it would have eliminated this Vietnamese woman who sold like food, Vietnamese food to me. And she was like the only contact I had to home because she sold Vietnamese food, right, which was what I grew up on. And so I was really, once again, very offended. Uh, yeah, so this piece is called the uh, Potest Panda Express. <laughs> Fuck the panda you trying to express bringing your inorganic, inhumane, insult for Chinese food up on this Berkeley campus. Now, I understand you bring the variety for the picky, the healthy for the skinny, and that wealthy for the student body ASUC. But understand, Panda Restaurant Group, gourmet Chinese food made on indigenous cut down rainforest lands, sprayed by hazardous chemicals, cleansed by migrant worker hands. Your so-called healthy fried food, dried and lifeless, brown nasty noodle, doused in saturated oil sauce, sprinkled by sterile pump mushrooms, layered by rubber the chicken on make-believe teriyaki glaze. This is not Chinese food. Your so-called small business, sponsored by corporate funds, pushes out the moms and pops that feed me between Spanish frustrations and public policy discussions. Now let's get this right. You don't call me by terms of endearment. Call me gong. Tell me I'm damn shy handsome, but too ump skinny like Goandas from Healthy Heavenly Foods. You don't sell me two hot bun meats for under five dollars after five o'clock and a high five to my unofficial auntie. Yeah, come on, go. Jupsu quet. And I walk away with my sandwich. I love you. I love you, bun me thinning sandwich. I love the way you spread your thick, pasty yellow pate across your soft, soy sauce covered buns. How you have slow slices of Vietnamese sweet salami. How you complemented by shreds of carrots, cucumbers, cilantro, and crunch. I bite you. <laughs> I bite you, my beautiful baguette. Like a pan of soft embrace of his first bamboo sticks. I chew, I chomp, I chew again. Chew, chew, chomp, chew. <laughs> I love you. And then I forgot my lines. OK. Got too excited. Got too excited. <laughs> So Panda Express, please do not fuck with that. Panda Restaurant Group owns 1,199 restaurants covering 34 states in Puerto Rico. So you're telling me you want Puerto Rico and Berkeley? There is a line, Panda, there is a line. Your one big business at Berkeley will sprout many other corporate weeds sucking out the grass-rooted garden of boutiques, antiques, small store, and open floor, moms and pops, family and community for my B-Town home. Now, what's Berkeley? without authentic Korean food made for my friends Jose and Arturo. Without Buffalo Exchange where you could buy other people's clothes. Where you could purchase the finest of herbal, medicinal, and recreational tools grown in the lush, beautiful backyards and closets of local Ber Berkeley residents. This is Berkeley, and we don't want you, Panda Express. So there is a line, Panda, and the, land, the line stands here. All right, all right. So uh, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, just my last piece is that uh, I'm trying to, this is crazy that uh, this poetry is actually getting me this far. And so I'm actually trying to produce a chat book. Uh, it's up and coming. It's in the works. So I'm starting a, a, a listserv of folks that might be interested in my work. Um, always trying to perform, always trying to spread out the education. That's why I think I do this work um, and sit down and write poetry. So, uh, but thank you again. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. Have a good night.